On June 20, 2025, the experimental short-haul aircraft Superjet 100, tail number 97023, serial number 9703, arrived at the Ramenskoy airfield of the M.M. Gromov Flight Research Institute in Zhukovsky. This aircraft has been completely replaced with imported components and systems. This was a significant milestone in Russia's aviation import substitution program as it signified the completion of the first long-distance flight for the SJ-100 equipped with Russian-made PD-8 engines. An experienced crew, consisting of test pilots Dmitry Demenev, Commander, Alexander Verkov, Igor Grevtsev, and Chief Flight Test Engineer Maxim Grukhanov, operated the aircraft. The journey started in Komsomolsk on Amur and included intermediate stops at two large Russian airports, Irkutsk, arrival on June 19, and Novosibirsk, departure to Zhukovsky the following day. The total route length was approximately 6,000 kilometers, with a flight duration of approximately nine hours, and the aircraft was flown at speeds of up to Mach 0.78 and altitudes of up to 12,000 meters. Following the flight assignment, we successfully worked out landings at two large airports, which indicates a high level of readiness of this machine, said crew commander Dmitry Demenev. The PD-8 engine is a critical component of the Superjet's import substitution program. The PD-8 was developed in a mere six years, in contrast to the previous generation PS-90 engine, which required 12 years to complete. This was achieved by leveraging the knowledge acquired from the development of the PD-14. The commitment of Russia to technological independence in aviation is underscored by the accelerated progress. The SJ-100's transformation extends beyond its engines. The following systems were replaced with Russian-made components as part of the import substitution program, including the APU or auxiliary power unit, the navigation and avionics apparatus, the landing mechanism, the control systems that are integrated, the electrical power infrastructure, the fire protection and air ventilation systems, and the equipment for the cabin. Furthermore, the airframe was modernized to facilitate manufacturing and maintenance, and the import substituted version was equipped with aerodynamic peripheral devices, known as sablets or cyberlets. The Superjet was relocated to the Yakovlev Aviation Technical Complex for preparation prior to the flight and ground certification test program upon its arrival at Romenskoy Airfield. The cross-country flight was essential for the confirmation of the certification test plan and the demonstration of the aircraft's capability to operate in typical civil aviation conditions, as per Chief Designer Kirill Kuznetsov. The aircraft was successfully serviced and prepared for the subsequent stage at standard airports such as Irkutsk and Novosibirsk for this purpose. The prototype aircraft 97023 is the third to be built under the SSJ New Import Substitution Program. It is equipped with PD-8 engines, as is the aircraft 970112. Three demonstration aircraft have completed more than 100 flights, with over 60 of those flights being conducted as part of certification tests. The main objective of aircraft 97023 is to exhibit the integrated performance of the PD-8 engine in conjunction with all import substituted systems. Chief Designer Kirill Kuznetsov stated that the flight tests of this aircraft will make up approximately 25 to 30 percent of the overall certification program. However, these tests are the core element that will demonstrate the interoperability of all import substituted systems and the PD-8 engine. Approximately 30 to 40 percent of the total test program has been completed thus far and approximately half of the planned ground test hours have been logged. By the end of 2025, approximately 200 flights are scheduled, which includes severe weather testing in both the Arabian Peninsula and Yakutia. The import substitution programs for both the SSJ-100 and MC-21 were subjected to unprecedentedly strict timelines as a result of the events of 2022, as emphasized by Vadim Badeka, the head of the United Aircraft Corporation, UAC. Despite the obstacles posed by suppliers and the necessity of re-establishing domestic civil aviation cooperation, the industry 
was compelled to mobilize at an unprecedented pace in response to the necessity for rapid solutions to transportation challenges. Future Prospects The SJ-100 is anticipated to be certified by the conclusion of 2025. The aircraft is on the brink of becoming the foundation of regional aviation in Russia, facilitating the expansion of domestic air routes and the renewal of airline fleets. In conclusion, the SJ-100's historic long-distance flight, which traversed Komsomolsk on Amur, Irkutsk, Novosibirsk, and ultimately Zhukovsky, not only showcases the technical prowess of the aircraft, but also the resilience and ingenuity of Russia's aviation industry. The SJ-100 is poised to inaugurate a new era in Russian civil aviation, embodying sustainable development and technological sovereignty with the introduction of the new PD-8 engines and a system suite that is entirely Russian-made. Well, it must be noted that this is us plane three in this program, Raised Air. Accordingly, the aircraft is already equipped with all its installed systems, including engines PD-8. This means that we started the final test program immediately after the first flight took place at the end of April, which means that we conducted part of these tests in May, so to speak, Komsomolsk on the Amur. Right now we have plans respectively to say from the span and from the ground. The most important ground test, which we are already conducting in the city of Zhukovsky at the Ramenskoye airfield. First of all, our LIA Research Institute. Yes, there is a very large laboratory there, which is necessary for internet testing. That's why for us, this step kind of flew across the country. These are, well, roughly speaking, two significant things. And one significant thing is that we are moving according to the plan that everyone has outlined for conducting inception tests and accordingly, say, subtiver. Our goals and objectives, but here is also step two to tell two, so to speak, an important story. Yes, we have two aircraft which actually flew today, yesterday, and today on typical routes for aircraft of this size and range based at airports that are not special. These are civil airports where, accordingly, they were accepted, serviced, released into flight. Accordingly, all the necessary measures have been taken for its readiness, which confirmed that the aircraft, as it were, is an aircraft constructed and designed, so to speak, together with its systems precisely for the purpose and task. Civil aviation standards necessitate the use of aircraft 9703, identifiable by its factory number, it's mainly about showcasing the functionality of aircraft systems, particularly those that are import substituted, in conjunction with each other and the engine using Evazim. This truly represents the core operational component of this aircraft. Uh, it is in the volume of the entire sectional, well, the entire sectional volume in terms of flights may not take up so much. Yes, yes, this is about the order of probably percent, probably 25, 30 of the total amount, but at the same time this the same grain that, but precisely demonstrates the work of all systems with each other. Yes, because it means it is necessary to demonstrate some things precisely in combination with all systems, including such very complex, so to speak, things that concern, oddly enough, more of the ground part. These are ground tests on the so-called high-frequency ground impact, so to speak, high-intensity fields, which are carried out in the laboratory, and they must be carried out precisely on an aircraft which is completely, so to speak, of a standard design. We have made more than 100 flights. That's where I'll start, according to different estimates, because we are flying simultaneously under both the completion test programs and the sectional test program in extremely infectious tests. This is already more than 60 flights. According to the program, well, altogether, there are more than 100 there. Yesterday, for three planes, we accomplished whatever tasks were required on board. Now again, 157.13 flight sectional. So accordingly, say tomorrow, prepare for flight 14. Well, that is, we are actually moving according to our plan. But if we count flights like this, probably, so to speak, we have passed somewhere in the order, probably percent. 30, so to speak, from the general program, but 30 to 40 percent if you count in the ground, so to speak. Well, in an hour, the coffin is probably half there. We still have most of it ahead of us. I am, as I said, associated with high-intensity fields. Well, and the main thing is what we, strictly speaking, are already approaching, as it would affect the Protroika. I said it's a pro system, more a pro system, and the engine. And most importantly, what do we fit on planes 9701 and uh, 95, 157? Uh, these are respectively flights along navigation routes. These are flights according to the aircraft guidance system, that is things related to navigation, as it were, and its accuracy. 
So on the aircraft 95, 157 flights continue according to the characteristics, as it were, of the aircraft by shifting PD-8 as an object, yes, as its aerodynamics, as its stability, controllability, such things. Now, do you think Russia should push the certifications when less than 50% of tests have been achieved? Let us know in the comments. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.